We will begin with the first technical session and I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce the speaker of our first technical session, Okim Sumua, a distinguished advocate of Guwahati High Court. He is an experienced and proficient advocate and is well known for his work in the field of law and justice. He has been in the standing council for UGC since the year 2010 and was also the former standing council higher education government of Assam. We are incredibly thankful to him for accepting our invitation. He would be speaking on the topic fast track codes, necessity of the hour. Sir, we are indeed honored to have that with us today and with these words I kindly welcome you to the dais and uh, I request you to kindly address the gathering. Before handing over to Sir, I request Dr. Smriti Shukhachwari to kindly felicitate Okim Sumba Sir. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Smriti Shukhachwari. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Basically, not very well today. Having some cough and cold. Uh, I'm practicing as an advocate in Mahati High Court since last more than seven years. And uh, I'm doing a research work under Dr. Ramesh Chandra Dr. Gohan, sir. He was a former advocate general of Assam and professor in Dr. University. And I am also doing research under him, he is my senior. Actually, he was invited to this, uh, this, this session. And he has already urgent measure in Supreme Court today. So he delegated this thing to me. I cannot replace him, that is sure. Uh, but I am trying to address certain two, three issues, very short speech. On written man is uh, working on this line, in this line since uh, very long. And persons like uh, Honorita Ma'am and others, you people are much wiser than me. But I am just sharing my, some of my experience. Papodi Chitya Ma'am, she is uh, walking on the ground uh, as a police officer and understood the very root causes of all these things. And being a lawyer, We have come across, and I have come across many such cases, and the judicious justice delivery system in our country. Just I am sharing some of my experience and some of my thoughts, which may be a little helpful to you. First of all, I don't understand, I don't know why. I have just said before the vice chancellor a few minutes ago that. Why this seminar was not made gender neutral? <laughs> not because that I am a man, that is why I have said it. It would have been made more wider by saying role of first and foremost in, the, in delivering justice. First of all. It could have been more wider. Anyway, this was in a wider sense. Don't take it otherwise. Because every heinous crime, heinous crime is a crime. It may be against a man or a woman. Time is a crime. Every crime should be dealt with in a manner. Should be dealt with in a manner that punishment imposed or inflicted upon the criminals set an example which will by looking at which the like-minded people will deter to commit such offense again. There are two theories of punishment two theories of punishment that I understand to be uh, effective is that deterrence and reformative. Retributive punishment, obsolete, because eye for an eye, 
is not applicable now because we are not living in a modern time. Retributive, sorry, deterrence and reformative. Reformative is of course for the first kind of offenders, for the first kind of offenders, which are, which are habitual offenders, which have committed heinous crime like gang rape and all. We must set examples by giving exemplary punishment. And not only that, that we must give an exemplary punishment, it must go and it must be reached to the society at large that see if you do this, this is the punishment. Unless and otherwise we do it, that punishment is how rigorous it is. Punishment, how rigorous it is, how painful it is, the society is not going to reform. Government brings enactment for two reasons. Laws comes into society for two reasons. One, to cope up with the changing needs of the society and two, to change the society as per law. Am I clear? Number one, to cope up with the changing need of the society or to change the society as per law. Changing need of the society, cyber act. Changing need of the society, art. Uh, uh, information technology act, like uh, some new acts, uh, the Muslim women protection of protection of Muslim women rights in marriages act 2019. This is changing need of the society. But to change the society as per law. IBC 376, ABCD. This is to change the society as well. Cyber, sorry, uh, restrain, to restrain this, uh, restrain the child marriage, to restrain sexual offenses against the child. Now, coming to the first track code. What is first track code? Is there any definition? What is first track code? Is there any provision in law that we must have a first track code? First track, in my understanding, means which runs first. The track of which, in which track we are going towards the justice delivery system, which runs first. And Professor Arup Chaudhary said, in his three lines sentence speech has spoken the crux of the whole seminar today. Because justice delayed is justice denied, justice hurried is justice buried. Now we have to strike a balance between the two. Because 90, almost 85 persons, 498 cases ends in fiasco. 85% of 498A cases ends in acquittal. Now it is a subject matter of research whether this is a faulty investigation, whether this is the witnesses stand hostile, whether this is a case that it was not properly prosecuted by the prosecution. This is a subject matter of research. See, gone, there is no loopholes of law, there is no dart of acts and rules. The only thing is that we have dirt infrastructure. Just now, I said, can you imagine of a hospital where 150 crores patient and 26,000 doctors? Ours is a country we are having 150 crores of population and 26,000 judicial officers. Just imagine. We are talking about fast track work. There is no first track court at all. The same judge, the same court who has been given a case, begin, giving a tag that this is a first track matter. And he has to hear it day by day. day, day that means day to day basis. The police officer who investigated the matter in Naga uh, before three years, after filing searches, he was transferred to Dubri. And he is coming to give witnesses. 
in the first day court in Nogra. Now imagine, I need not to explain. You are wiser enough to understand. Someone do not serve on the witnesses. Witness died, witness lived. Now court has to act upon the materials available on records. Not on the air, not on the emotion. Three days ago, I talked with the district judge of Naga, who is doing the trial of Ovinil case, Ovinil murder, this one, Mowgli Singh, of this Guwahati boys who were killed in Karganga. The district judge is a very good friend of mine, I called him. So what is the stage of this case? You are doing it in a fast track man. Well, sir, boss, it will take another six months. Why? Look, the I.O. there are three I.O. The main I.O. who investigated the whole matter, he is a renal failure patient. He has been hospitalized. The moment he gets cured, he comes for adducing evidence, fails him. 10 minutes, 15 minutes cross examination, then he goes away. Then again, after one month, he comes. And without his evidence, this matter cannot be tried, concluded. So he explained the difficulties, what is going on. Can a fast track court bypass that predicament? Can a fast track court uh, go, keeps on going or keeps on adjudicating the matter without taking the evidence of the prime I.O. I.O. means the investigating officer. Now, coming to the practical problem I am talking about. Now coming to the subject that the uh, role of a fast track court in delivering justice, all the time I will not say for the word women because if I say fast track court kindly understand that I am talking about fast track court delivering justice to women, kindly understand that. Now we are from this, the genesis, this is very academics, very, very uh, Fundamentals of the, the this uh, first day quote or the justice delivery system is that concept of human rights is the very fundamental things of justice delivery system. We have and if the the, the concept of first day quote is a judicially evolved concept. There is nothing call first track court in CRPC, there is no provision. So the human rights, the concept of human rights for the first time was discussed in United Nations after 1947 which was held in San Francisco. And from there only the article 1, this is the preamble, I believe it would be very monotonous if I read the preamble, everybody knows it. This is the preamble where it is said that every person should be treated with his human dignity. Nobody, nobody should be treated cruelty, cruel, cruel treatments not to be given to anyone. And then the article of that, uh, there are five or uh, one or two articles that is there. In these two articles of that uh, human, human ch charter, for the first time, the concept of human rights was evolved and accepted by the whole world. And this is the source from which the human rights concept, women commissions, human rights commissions in India were evolving. This is the source of source of this. This is the international treaties. And there are, uh, there is a judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. Everybody knows it. This is a 13 judges judgment rendered by 13 judges, wherein the UN Charter was referred to, and the human, the concept of human rights, that human rights is the most fundamental rights of everyone. Therefore, a speedy trial. Can you see what it was said in Kaswananda Bharti? 
I may here mention that while our fundamental rights and directive principles were being fashioned and approved by the Constituent Assembly on December 10, 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The declaration may not be a legally binding instrument, but it shows how India understood the nature of human rights. I may here quote the only the preamble. Preamble that I have just shown you before. Now the next five judges benches, five judges bench of the Honorable Supreme Court. In the case of Abdul Rahman Antule versus R. S. Nayak. For the students, I am trying to say this. These are the very important judgments you must go through. You must go through if you are a student of law, if you are a student of humanities, or if you are a student of social sciences. These are the judgments of the Honorable Supreme Court, which is set the foundations of human rights, necessity of human rights as a fundamental rights, and it is a now part of the Article 21 of the Constitution of India. That speedy and fair trial is our fundamental rights. And this theory and this right has been evolved as a fundamental right by these judgments. I am just quoting one, uh, it's a very uh, almost 150 pages long judgment. And there are almost 1100 paragraphs. Therefore, you can get it in internet, it is everywhere uh, available. And along with this, uh, Abdul Rahman Onkule's husband, one of the most important another judgment reported in 1978, 1 SSC 248, is called Manaka Ganti. When the then Prime Minister uh, Indira Gandhi impounded the passport of Manaka Gandhi, her uh, daughter in law, then a suit was filed before the Honorable Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court held that right to life, which Dignity is a fundamental right under the Article 21. And perhaps in my very poor understanding of law, that this is the crux of the whole Indian Constitution. This is the heart of the Indian Constitution. That right to life. Right to life, right to life means it includes right to life with dignity, not a, an animal existence. And this is the this is the judgments of five judges bench, it's called constitution bench, and this judgment has evolved the theory of justice delivery system in a fast manner, in a fast track manner. Next. Now question is, what are those cases? Which cases shall be handled by the fast track? Is there any definition that this kind of only this case will be this kind of cases will be handled by the first track court. There is no definition. There is no bifurcation. There is no schedule. Which kind of cases will be taken by the first track court? Because of the fact that there is no first track court. There is no provision in the CRPC to make a first track court. It is a judicially evolved concept. The concept of first track court is a judicially evolved concept. Now, when there is a heinous crime against a woman, basically we are seeing heinous crime or mob lynching, heinous crime of murder, very heinous, which cannot be even seen, the pictures of which cannot be even seen in the videos and all. Then government, what government does? Government writes a letter to the High Court or High Court by Suomoto taking it, writes, passes an order directing the Constitution Court to try such matter in a fast track manner. Now, fast track means fast track. It should be concluded in a fast track, in a fast manner. Is it possible to fix time frame for disposal of a case, criminal case? Is it possible practically? In my understanding, it is not possible. And we are talking about it judicial system, we, we are talking about the trial, what about the investigation? Because a crime is committed in this place against the woman, police, a file will be lodged, police will come, investigation, 
forensic experts, forensic reports. Then Sarsit issuing summon to the accused, bail, trial, judgments, appeal, revision, review, Supreme Court. Impossible. It is very lucid and very shooting to our ear that the matter is tried in a fast step court. But to my experience, it's not possible. Because court cannot underestimate or undermine the right of an accused to defend his case. Tomorrow, we may be at the receiver's end. Tomorrow, I may be falsely implicated in a woman's harassment case. The number of cases is not less than a man are harassing, harassed by women. Those kind of number of those kind of cases are also not less. Therefore, the judicial principle in criminal cases, in criminal law, is to presume that the accused is innocent until his guilt guilt is proved. And that principle holds the whole thing. Except, except the POXO matters. In POXO, POXO means protection of child from sexual offenses. In POXO, the presumption is reversed. In POXO cases, presumption is that you are guilt. You are the guilty of this offense. Now you prove your innocence. In ordinary criminal cases, you are innocent. Prosecution, prove his guilt. Therefore, proving a case beyond all reasonable doubts in a specified time frame, including the investigation, trial, examination of witnesses, judgment, appeal, second appeal in High Court, Supreme Court, SLP, it's a long way to go. Therefore, in my humble understanding, we can say that reasonably, a, a reasonable time frame can be given to a fast track court to resolve the case or to come to a conclusion of a trial. A reasonable time. Now it's a very big thing, what is reasonableness? The another question arises, what is reasonableness? Two, two years, three years, one year or six months? I have said this to all of you that there is no legal instrument to constitute a fast track court. It is a judicially evolved practice. Fast track court functions only when directed by the Honorable High Court. Yes, this is important. Fast track court does not mean separate court. The same usual court will be burdened by another high voltage case. No infrastructure to handle which such cases of heinous crime against women in a first step court. The same judge who is running with bundles and bundles of cases will be given one more case to run it first in a first step. Therefore, it makes do you think that it makes any sense? It makes no sense at all. This is part the fast track court word is a misnomer in my understanding. It is a misnomer. Why? How, how it is fast track? You tell me. Guwahati Amruk Metro is the busiest district having thousands and thousands of cases. And we are having only uh, seven judicial officers. Seven or ten judicial officers. I believe now it is ten. In time. Rumiyam knows it, that is why he said. There is nothing. Ten judicial officers come from Metro District, like 21 inspectors in this poor PS. Isn't it, ma'am? 21 assigned this poor PS, investigation, 
law and order, VIP duty, what they will do? There was a judgment in 1996 passed by the Supreme Court which was directed all the states to separate the investigation wings from the law and order part. It was not complied with. Then Guwahati High Court by, Lord, by my Lord Justice B.D. Agarwal passed a judgment in, uh, I suppose in 2013 or 14. As per the, to comply with the order of the Honorable Supreme Court, not done. So making, doing seminar in an AC room is very easier. Giving lectures on the fast track court and giving women, talking about women empowerment and delivering justice to women. No. Go to the ground, to the deeper root, where the, where the reason lies, where the cause lies. When we are suffering from fever, we take a crossing tablet to below to lessen the temperature. This is just the tri treatment of the symptom. Making a seminar on fast track core is a tri treatment of the symptom, not the treatment of the disease. This is this disease is somewhere else. We have to address that. The root cause of the whole thing is lack of infrastructure, lack of judicial officer, lack of subordinate staffs, lack of investigating officers who was given proper training. Ninety percent uh, police office, police uh, inspectors of invest inspector do not know what is cybercrime. Do not know what is FSL. Just. Six months ago, I own a case and I was appointed by the High Court to defend the accused persons. I own the case and I cried while I was coming out of the courtroom. The wife of the main culprit was killed in her house, in, in her matrimonial home. Then she was suspended in a tree in their backyard in their backyard and trial court convicted the whole family, five persons of the whole family for life. And I reversed, I argued the case in appeal and I reversed it. And I cried after reversing it. Because I know, I could see from the records it was a murder. But she was this, those persons were acquitted by the court only because the investigation was faulty. The witnesses did not speak anything about the crime. If we have proper evidence, we do not should not go for quantity of evidence. We should go for quality of evidence. We need two witnesses. We need two witnesses which can which will not be turned hostile. So these are the things. Now I am just concluding. My suggestion that we need a legislation for fast track court. We need a legislation for fast track court. And in this legislation, it will be it will be mentioned, it will be written what kind of cases will be taken up by the fast track court. Impose time frame for disposal of such cases wherever possible. Provide training to judges, public prosecutor, defense counsel who shall participate in the proceeding of FTC. And with these words, I would like to conclude and just one data that I collected yesterday night, last night. This would be important, I suppose. Uh, if I can be given five minutes time more. I would like to give some very important data that I collected yesterday. If I can be given five minutes more, I am, I am, I am running short of time, I know. The most important, most important aspect of this today's seminar is this. Judges population ratio of India. See, what Kiran Rijiju said in the Rajya Sabha. Judges population ratio in India is today 21.03 judges per million people in 2022. 
per million means 10 lakhs i suppose 1 million means 10 lakhs 21 judges will take the case of 10 lakhs people what more we require to discuss this is the end of everything now see the see this slide bulgaria judges population ratio per lakh 57 just 57.2 judges over 1 lakh people in bulgaria it's not a developed country see united states 9.3 judges over 1 lakh 9.8 judges mexico nicaragua sweden these are all 1 lakh this is over 1 lakh not 10 per million now pendency see the pendency I have collected this data last night at about 12 o'clock. We have a national judicial data grid. Please note it. National judicial data grid. Every minute, the cases are disposed of and filed against women, against men, civil case, criminal case. That national judicial data grid is updating the information. Every minute. Now, it is a, this is the data of last night. See. About 30 year old cases in Assam, see 24, about 30 years old and you can have the All India information also, see the pendency, 4 lakh 81 thousand civil and criminal and 388,725 criminal. Now I will not trouble you much. I agree that justice delayed is justice denied, but we should not do hurry. We have to strike out a balance. We have to go through uh, giving reasonable opportunities to the defense also. So with these few words, I would like to conclude. Thank you for inviting KK Handic University. Thank you for listening to me. I don't have so much of uh, practice in speak, public speaking, but... Thank you, sir, for your very, very highly insightful deliberation on the different phases of fast track code, uh, particularly stemming out from your first ten experiences. You have significantly brought out the issues confronting the contemporary justice delivery mechanisms, which is also very important for us while developing recommendations on ensuring efficient justice delivery system. Thank you once again, sir.